And so we've got Anthony Ryder from South Lyon, Michigan, recently selected as the Lions 2020 Fan of the Year. He has a passion about sports broadcasting. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One cry, baby! Brad Holmes and the Detroit Lions had a very busy day three to the NFL draft, trading up for three of their four selections in the fourth and sixth rounds. The Detroit Lions were dealing picks and they were moving up and down the draft board and their fourth round selection of Utah running back Sony Vaki was no exception to it. The Detroit Lions decided to give up the 164th pick, the 201st pick, as well as a fourth round selection in 2025 in exchange for the 132nd as well as the 210th pick in the 2024 draft class. They made this trade with the Philadelphia Eagles and moved up to pick 132 to select Sony Vaki, the running back from Utah. Now, Sony Vaki stands at 5'11", 210 pounds. He is not the biggest running back, but he does have some really good size and some really good power at that size. He's not going to be the slashing running back like Jameer Gibbs, the guy that's going to run in the four threes, the guy that's going to be super explosive, the player that is going to make people miss and make people look silly. But he's more in the mold of an RB2. He's more in the mold of a David Montgomery, of an A.J. Dillon for the Green Bay Packers, right? More in the mold of a smaller running back, a heavier running back, a running back that can move the pile. And I think that Sony Vaki's role with the Detroit Lions will be very similar to that. But I also think he does bring a little bit of hidden explosiveness to the roster that a lot of people aren't really giving him credit for. Now, Sony Vaki had a 39 and a half inch vert and a 10 foot five broad jump at his pro day at Utah, both of which grayed out as elite for the explosiveness category on his RES score. In fact, his 39 and a half inch vert puts him in the 96th percentile among running backs all time, while his 10 foot five broad jump puts him in the 92nd percentile all time for the running back position. His 5 foot 11, 210 pound frame is nothing special. It's a good size for a running back, but nothing elite. His 40 yard dash does leave a little bit to be desired. A 4-6-2 40-yard dash is not a very strong score, but when watching his film and watching his ability to break plays wide open, I actually thought he looked really explosive, and the 4-6-2 40-yard dash really doesn't show up on film as much as you might think. Part of that is due to his 1-6-10 yard split, which is a good, but again, not great time for a 10-yard split at running back, and then his explosive, or and then his agility scores, again, came back just okay with a 4.2 shuttle as well as a 7.163 cone drill. Overall, Sony Vaki finished with a 7.94 RAS score, meaning he is a good athlete, but he is not a great athlete for the Detroit Lions. But again, I don't think he necessarily needs to, and I do think the film shows a little bit of a different story. It shows a player that can break off massive plays. It shows a player that can be versatile, and it shows a player that is a major impact player for their team, regardless of where they are on the football field. Now, Sony Vaki took most of his snaps last season at the safety position for Utah, where he totaled 51 tackles, eight and a half tackles for loss, two sacks, one interception, and two passes defended. Now, I personally don't really think Sony Vaki is an NFL caliber safety. I don't think he has the coverage ability to be an NFL caliber safety, but I do think he does have some ability to be a box player for the Detroit Lions. In my opinion, watching Vaki at Utah on the defensive side of the ball, it seems to me that he has a very linebacker-esque skill set while being at the safety position. Now, while that would leave him to be a very undersized player at the linebacker position, it would give him adequate speed. It would give him still really good explosiveness and some decent agility. So while I don't think he has the coverage ability to be a deep safety in the NFL, I do think he has the tackling ability. I do think he has the closing 
speed. And I do think he has the raw ability to be a box safety or potentially a weak side linebacker at the NFL level, as well as the running back that he was drafted to be. Again, eight and a half tackles for loss, two sacks, an interception, and a two passes defended. Most of his big plays came within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. Obviously, his eight and a half tackles for loss and two sacks came behind the line of scrimmage. His interception came before the first down marker. It was about a six yards past the line of scrimmage where he took the football the way off a tipped pass, as well as his multiple passes defended all came within right around that 10 yard mark at the line of scrimmage. So he is a good short area player, but his deep coverage leaves a little bit to be desired. But I don't think that's where his role truly will be with the Detroit Lions. In fact, I think much like where they drafted him to be, I think he's going to be a much better running back at the next level. In the Pac-12, Sony Vaki took 42 carries for the Utes a season ago, where he totaled 317 yards in two touchdowns while averaging 7.5 yards per carry in one of the best conferences in the country. Right, that 7.5 yards per carry puts him ahead of guys like Jonathan Brooks in this draft class and puts him toe-to-toe -to -toe as far as an efficiency rating with any running back in this class. He was, by the numbers, the most efficient running back in the 2024 NFL draft class. And while 42 carries isn't a massive sample size, it is a fair amount of carries to judge him off of, and it is a fair amount to evaluate as an NFL running back prospect. He also had 11 receptions through the year for 203 yards and three more more touchdowns through the year, averaging 18.5 yards per reception, which again, on a small sample size, is more than a lot of NFL caliber wide receiver prospects in this NFL draft. So while people are saying that Vaki isn't explosive enough to be a running back at the next level, he's not explosive enough to be a contributor at the NFL level, at the college level, he was more explosive than arguably any player in football on the offensive side of the ball last year and did it on a I would say an average amount of carries for a player that really didn't play running back or receiver until the middle of the season, getting no work with it in the offseason and really just relying on his athletic ability and his athletic prowess to make big plays and help the Utah offense. Now, Sony Vaki is a really, really strong player for the Detroit Lions. There was an interview with Brad Holmes where they talked about Vaki and where they went to his pro day and he started off with a really long defensive back drill where the Lions were pretty impressed. He moved really well. He showed some good movement skills, showed some good ball skills. But then he went to the running back drills, and he looked amazing at the running back drills. But after that, he went to a third position drill where he worked out with the wide receivers, both on the boundary and in the slot. He showed really good hands, showed some really good routes to run, as well as the ability to be a, a as well as the ability to be a contributor from that side of the football. And then after all three of those positional drills, he went out and he did special teams work. He went out and worked as a gunner. He went out and worked as a kick returner, as a punt returner, as a blocker, as a tackler, as a coverage guy. He worked pretty much every single position he possibly could at his pro day. He worked out for probably two, three hours at four to five different positions. And it's really stuck with Brad Holmes. It showed that this guy is a football player that this kid is going to contribute at every single level and potentially every single part of the Detroit Lions franchise, be that offense, defense, and special teams. And even though I don't necessarily think he's going to be the biggest contributor on the defensive side of the ball, if they decide to play him there at all, I do think if they do focus on putting him at running back, they give him to Scotty Montgomery, they give him to Ben Johnson, they give him to this offensive coaching staff, they can turn Sony Vaki into a really, really strong RB2 or RB3 option and really upgrade that position for situations where maybe David Montgomery misses a couple of games where Jameer Gibbs misses a game or two, I do think Sony Vaki has the potential to be a really good NFL running back. And even though he's starting as a day three you know, pick, even though he's starting as running back three on the roster right now, he is immediately going to come in and be one of the best special teams players the Lions have to offer. He's going to be right there with Jalen Reeves Maven, really be the Chase Lucas replacement that the Lions were looking for throughout the offseason. So he's going to come in and do that early. He's going to be a gunner. He's going to be a coverage guy on kickoffs, could potentially even return kicks and punts for the Detroit Lions as well if Khalif Raymond is to have an absence. And then he's going to go back to the offensive side of the ball, be a change of pace back, a big play threat for the Detroit Lions, and a guy that is obviously going to be forgotten about in this offensive arsenal, right? 
Everybody's going to game plan for Jameer Gibbs. Everybody's going to game plan for David Montgomery. Everybody's going to game plan for Amon Ra and JMO and Laporta and potentially even guys like DPJ and Khalif Raymond. Sony Vaki is going to be the 10th option on this offense potentially, and nobody's going to know his name. Nobody's going to expect him to have an impact. However, I do see a world where Sony Vaki, you know, starts off on special teams and then works his way into the offense and potentially even works his way into the defense as that fourth safety position. I think it gives the Detroit Lions a ton of depth. I think it gives them a football player that they absolutely would love to work with. And much like Giovanni Manu, who we talked about yesterday, I do think that Sony Vaki is a ball of clay prospect. I do think if he really focused on the running back position in college, he could have been one of the better running back prospects to come out of this draft and potentially would have gone earlier than the fourth round. I think there's a good chance that the Lions identified a really strong running back prospect that was never really given the opportunity at the FCS level. And I do think that he will, with the right coaching, with the right development, turn into a really, really good player for the Detroit Lions two or three years down the road. And when David Montgomery leaves in two years, potentially, I think Sony Vaki for the last two years of his contract could come in, be that change of pig bass be that change of pace back with Jameer Gibbs and give the Detroit Lions another element to their offense that they're all ready going to have. So with all of that being said, that is my analysis on Sony Vaki. I think he's going to be a versatile player. I think he's going to be a great special teams guy early, a change of pace back on offense. And I think he's going to be a very fun player to watch in the preseason and a very fun player to see how the Lions use him in the preseason and potentially going through into the regular season. With all of that being said, that's all I got for you guys right now. Let me know down in the comments below what you think about the draft pick. But with all of that being said, that is all I have for you guys right now. Thank you all so very much for watching. And until next time, and as always, go Lions.